What makes our bodies feel when we exercise? There are a myriad of different explanations. In this video, we will focus on one often overlooked one, hypoglycemia induced by exercise. It isn't just limited to super athletes, fatigue can happen to anyone, and as you'll see in this video, there are some steps you can take to prevent it. Dizziness in the middle of exercise often scares people into thinking the worst, that they're having signs of heart problems or stroke. But sometimes there can be a simpler reason for the mm -hmm. symptoms. Dr. Jay Adlersberg is here with details. Jay? Sade, Diane, it's a good idea to bring any symptoms related to exercise to the attention of your doctor, but in a quarter to a third of people, the dizziness and other symptoms in the midst of working out may be due to low blood sugar brought about by exertion. Walter Johnston's athletic passion is running, but over the past five years, he noticed some strange symptoms that threatened to put him on the sidelines. As I ran, my, I would start to see spots in front of my eyes, and then they would come together and I would have one big hole in my vision. If I kept on running, I would start to lean or tilt to one side. It wasn't his heart or a stroke. Hey Walter, you're gonna feel a little pinch. It was his blood sugar. 88. That's perfectly normal. That's perfect. But his treadmill test was not perfect on Mr. Johnston's first go-round. His sugar was far below normal. He was having exercise-induced hypoglycemia. What is exercise-induced hypoglycemia? Glycemia is blood glucose levels. Hyper means high and hypo means low. Therefore, hypoglycemia is low blood glucose. To understand what this means, we have to understand part of the endocrine system as it pertains to blood glucose. The pancreas is in charge of releasing two important hormones, insulin and glucagon. Other hormones are released, but we are focusing on insulin and glucagon. When you eat, there are many glucose molecules in your food in the form of carbohydrate. The carbohydrate in your food breaks down into glucose. The glucose enters your bloodstream, raising your blood sugar. When the pancreas senses that the blood glucose is getting high, it releases insulin. Insulin works to shuttle glucose to cells by binding to insulin receptors outside the cell. This creates a signal transduction cascade, eventually activating GLUT4 receptors. These receptors allow for glucose to pass through the cell membrane. What does the glucose do in the cell? Well, it goes through several steps, glycolysis, Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain. For the sake of simplicity, we will not go into the specific of these cycles, but know that one molecule of glucose produces around 38 ATP molecules. ATP has high energy bonds, which allow for cellular functions to occur. It is considered the currency of cells. Insulin is also important for the creation of glycogen. Glycogen is stored glucose chains in the liver and muscle tissues. Depending on one's training level, as we'll see in a moment, one can have different levels of glycogen stored. What if blood glucose gets too low? When the pancreas senses that blood glucose levels are dropping, it releases glucagon. Glucagon essentially is the opposite of insulin. It signals for the liver to convert its stored glycogen to glucose, increasing blood glucose levels. Exercise is defined by the World Health Organization as a subcategory of physical activity that is planned, structured, repetitive, and purposeful in the sense that improvement or maintenance of one or more components of physical fitness is the objective. During light to moderate exercise, such as golfing or bowling, the muscles begin to use glucose. At light to moderate exercise, the pancreas regulates blood glucose tightly. There isn't a high risk of inducing hypoglycemia. At rest, muscles primarily oxidize fat. As muscles are used, the need for glucose increases. This graph from a paper by Holsey et al. shows an inverse relationship between fat oxidation and carbohydrate oxidation. As the amount of energy expenditure increases, expressed here in percent VO2 max, the percent of carbohydrate oxidized increases while percent of fat oxidized decreases. This is a trend for both trained and untrained individuals, though trained individuals have a higher rate of fat oxidation. During high-intensity exercise, blood glucose is not closely regulated. There are a number of issues that arise. It is much like a stress response. During short-term high-intensity exercise, insulin sensitivity increases, resulting in a risk of long-term hypoglycemia, with insulin sensitivity being seen 16 to 24 hours after exercise. What does it look or feel like when signs of hypoglycemia begin to show? If left untreated, hypoglycemia can be deadly. However, it is relatively easy to treat. 
Blurry vision, rapid heartbeat, sudden mood chains, sudden nervousness, fatigue, hunger, shaking, loss of consciousness, trouble thinking clearly, skin tingling, headache, sweating. So I ran to the end of the road, and when I got there, I thought maybe I'd run to the end. Prolonged low intensity exercise maintained at 55 to 75 percent of VO2 max for longer than 90 minutes puts you in the danger zone. Glycogen depletion gradually occurs and signs of hypoglycemia begin. However, there's a mechanism that adapts to this, resulting in a progressive decline in proportion of energy derived from glycogen and an increase in plasma fatty acid oxidation. This mechanism is increased with training, as seen here in this graph. If fat-derived energy cannot supplement the lack of carbohydrates, hypoglycemia will occur. Diet also plays a role in glycemia regulation. As seen in this graph, those who consumed a higher fat diet had a higher rate of fat oxidation. Those consuming a higher carbohydrate diet had a higher carbohydrate oxidation percentage expenditure. This difference is especially stark as the percent of the VO2 max increases. In 1999, a study by H. Coopers et al. was published. The abstract stated, to study the occurrence and contributing factors of transient hypoglycemia after pre-exercise ingestion of glucose after a 4-hour fast. 19 well-trained cyclists ingested 50 grams of glucose dissolved in water around noon after having a normal breakfast. It was concluded that pre-exercise carbohydrate ingestion after a 4-hour fast is sufficient to induce a transient hypoglycemia. The data suggested that the occurrence of hypoglycemia is determined by a combination of high insulin sensitivity, a small amount of ingested glucose, and a low sympathetic activity. Training plays a very important role. In Holsey et al. publication, they found an effect that influences glucose transport is an increase in the GLUT4 protein, the protein that allows for glucose to enter the cell. As you can see in this figure, as exercise increases, the GLUT4 receptors also increase. Endurance exercise training induces a number of major adaptation in skeletal muscle. These include an increase in muscle mitochondria with an enhancement of the capacity to oxidize carbohydrate and fatty acids. The halftime of this adaptive increase in mitochondria is six days. Training will also develop one's glycogen stores, as you can see in this table. Over time, the trained body replenishes a much larger glycogen store than an untrained body. While training is good for preventing hypoglycemia, overtraining is highly detrimental. Hypoglycemia is listed as a very early symptom of overtraining. What did Mr. Johnson's nutritionist recommend? It seems to come about most often when somebody eats something sweet prior to exercise, shortly before exercise. Very classically, it happens about 10 to 20 minutes into exercise. Walter's symptoms happen if he ate carbohydrates within a couple of hours of a run. Other symptoms can include lightheadedness, hunger, and cold sweats. When you eat something sweet, insulin enters the blood to stabilize the blood sugar. Some people are very sensitive to insulin, which can drop the blood sugar very low during exercise. His first treadmill test showed the low sugar just when his symptoms started. But today's test was fine. The solution was pretty simple. He stopped eating at least four hours before a run. Since I've used that formula, I haven't had a single episode of the hypoglycemia, which is wonderful. Beth Clay says it's okay to use sports drinks or other carbohydrates after the start of exercise. You and your doctor should rule out heart or blood vessel problems if you get symptoms from working. Hypoglycemia is not a disease in itself, but a sign of a larger health problem. While there are so many uncertain things about the mechanism of hypoglycemia, if you have hypoglycemia, eat 15 grams of simple carbs, rest, hydrate, know the signs, Seek medical help if necessary. Hypoglycemia is a complex issue, but in healthy adults it can be easily managed if you pay attention to your body. When I got tired, I slept. When I got hungry, I ate. When I had to go, you know, I went.